Hello everyone and welcome to the 2018 tour of the gallery here on Bath Road. I just want to take a few minutes to show you what goes on around uh, at Suarez HQ. So if you want to follow me through, let's, um, let's begin the tour. So if you should make it here, then um, the first bit you're going to see really is the main part of the gallery. And uh, one of the things I'll probably talk about in great length is the floor. Um, up until recently, the, the floor was a concrete kind of affair, but as you can see now, it all looks wonderful with uh, fabulous laminate flooring, etc., etc. And um, that's because uh, when the tenants moved out uh, below, um, all the heat stopped coming up through the floor and it all shrunk and it all cracked and went all a bit bizarre. But anyway, so the floor looks really nice. Uh, this is a good thing when you walk in. So the gallery here on Bath Road, um, we built it solely as a place to, to hang the paintings and stop them being sat on the floor. Um, these being the quality that they are, they don't really like to be sat on their, under their own weight. Um, so really it was just an exercise three or four years ago in just being able to hang them somewhere where they could relax and sit how they would do naturally. And that has transpired into this is what you see today. The brilliant thing about this space is, is that you've got uh, plenty of natural light and uh, being a very old mill building, I think it dates back to the 1850s, something like that. Uh, one of the things they did was build these skylights into it. So occupying the whole top floor of the mill here, you just get the most brilliant light. And we're shooting this around about midday. So we're now, even if on an overcast day, probably still going to get a tremendous amount of light in. So if you do make it here, you're going to see these paintings really, you know, in the best possible light you can. So one of the things that um, I've done over the last couple of years is sculpture. I've got a few dotted around the place. Uh, these have become quite a labour of love, if I'm honest. And um, the amount of work that goes into doing them is it's, it's quite scary, really, compared to the paintings. But when you get here, come around and have a look. I think they look pretty magnificent, actually, in the gallery setting. And... They're something that I'm really, really pleased about and I've really enjoyed the process of doing them and learning some new skills and new techniques. But yeah, I'm really, really proud of the sculpture and I think they look fantastic. So over in this part of the, uh, the gallery, there's some, uh, some more paintings hung. Behind me, you can see the uh, Pollock replica that I did. Arguably, one of his greatest works was called Blue Poles. And I had a client a couple of years ago who wanted to have a replica of it. So um, after much soul searching and deliberation and a year's worth of work, I might add, on one canvas, uh, we managed to get one done. And that's kind of like one of my favourite pieces, um, purely because it was, a lot of people said it couldn't be done. And like as usual at Suarez HQ, we managed to go ahead and do the impossible. Um, so, yeah, so that may or may not be here when, when you come and visit. Moving over into this part of the gallery, this is a bit more social, uh, a couple of sofas and uh, most importantly of all, ladies and gentlemen, the coffee machines. Yes, not one, but two coffee machines, because let's face it, one isn't enough. Um, so, uh, yeah, we could just get to have a little sit and a little chat about things. A nice little book if you come here. I think it's always good to document your journey in uh, paper format. So there's a nice little book with uh, all kinds of wonderful pictures of all kinds of manner of things. So, uh, yeah, if you, if you do come here, it'd be great to show you that as well. And don't forget, as well as doing all this big, grand stuff and all these huge paintings full of colour, etc., etc., there's also room to do other things as well. So, over the last year, 18 months, I've been looking at doing other things as well. Uh, one of them is the acrylics, uh, which were uh, interesting. Uh, project to do and these really are uh, just if you like a little foray into uh, into Suarez without having to uh, fill up a huge wall uh, these are some rather nice uh, originally painted and signed uh, canvases sat inside a uh, 30 mil acrylic frame so they're, they're nice they, they sit very well on your desktop or console tables and also there's another another set of sculptures here this is quite interesting because it gives you some kind of aspect on sizes and finishes and shapes and no matter how good we try and shoot this on video i think you just need to see them in real life just really to get some kind of appreciation about what they are and the forms and the shapes and the textures and they're, they're things that i'm really quite quite proud of
Moving on then. Uh, we have a room here that I wouldn't po probably normally take you in this, but hey, we're, we're doing the full tour, so we might as well have a little look. And this is just something I call the resource room. I do have another name for it, but that's not broadcastable. But in here, there's all kinds of bits and pieces, including sculpture that's uh, been done historically, just waiting for me to decide really on uh, the finishes and what other processes need to be done to them at the moment. Plus a couple of mannequins. Afternoon, ladies. Let's not talk about that. <clears throat> That's the resource room. Um, we're going to go into the back space now and have a little look. But of note, perhaps if and we can just stop here for a second, uh, one of the, the main key pieces in the entire collection as we speak is this one, which is called Mother of Pearl, which was five and a half months to create. And uh, for lots of different reasons, this was quite a breakthrough piece for me. But it does form one of the centre points of, of the entire gallery, and it's deliberately put here because this is a space where it can come and talk and chat and it's quite a dominant thing and love or hate it uh, kind of is irrelevant it's a real tour de force about all those things that I've uh, learned over the past seven or eight years and put into a single painting so that, that is a uh, I think quite a focal point and anybody who comes here uh, usually uh, you know has some comments about it so that's great it's a real conversation piece and uh, I think you can't really ask any more out of a piece of art than getting people's tongues wagging Okay, so let's go into the second part of the gallery. So, like I've said, this is an old industrial mill and the building is a wonderful space. It's not without its quirks. But back in this, the, uh, the, 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 this part of the gallery, there's a more industrial kind of heritage is on show. So I've deliberately not done anything with the floors and the walls, but left it in this kind of raw state. And as you can see by what's going on in here, most of the bigger pieces tend to have their homes out here. So as you can see at the moment, these are a couple of spin works that I've been doing. Uh, I wanted really to, uh, to have a process involved where I could see how big we could get the whole sort of uh, aspect of spin paintings done. So that's just a couple there, anyway, just to look at. And we've got more as we sort of progress down in all kinds of shapes and sizes. There's always an influx of work coming in and then there's always work going out or doing something with it or clients' commissions. So this is very much a working space, um, as well as looking, you know, nice with all the paintings hung up as well. So we may see bits and pieces on the floor, there's things in progress, work ready to be stretched, all, all kinds of things like that. One of the things I like in here are these, uh, are the frames, these, these wheeled frames that the paintings sit on, which is a pretty uh, inspired idea. They're actually clothes rails, I just bought 30 of them off Amazon, and they're great because it means that you can pretty much put most sizes of paintings on them and you can wheel them round. The, the benefit of which is that if somebody's coming and they particularly want to see something, on it goes onto one of these and we can push it out where somebody can see it. So sometimes I think the, the neatest solutions are the simplest ones. So moving on kind of round, yes, there's a bucket. That's because the roof still leaks in places. <laughs> a reminder that we are in a 150-year-old building, which, uh, which is very good. So we've got a few more sculptures uh, from the collection dotted around here as well in various shapes or forms and again I haven't moved too far into the sculpture side of things but again I just think they really make a nice addition to what goes on here you know it's, it's an extension of being creative and I think you should always look at different avenues to do that. So down on the floor we've got a couple of canvases here these are as I said work in progress these are waiting to be stretched around their frames um, so there's every possibility you might find one or two bits when you come here, but that's good like this because it is, as I said, uh, a working space. This is where everything has to happen, so I have to use the space properly. So down on this wall, we've got a few of the diamonds from the Spin Art collection. Now I say diamonds, yes, before you all write in, I know that they're squares, but they do look kind of funky when they're hung as diamonds, so pretty much left it that. It's a little bit different. And as you probably know by now, I kind of like different. That's good. Uh, a few sculptures which uh, haven't gone out on, uh, on the site just yet. Um, that's a, quite a nice uh, looking one in gold. And like this goldy sort of toffee apple, rich, thick coated texture. So really, I'm enjoying having a play around with different coatings and finishings. I think that's really adding to what's going on with them at the moment. And then um, painting behind, which is just waiting to get stretched up. So 
So let me start to show you some of the behind the scenes things. Now this giant wall, which looks rather wonderful and magnificent and wise, is actually a uh, kind of a floating wall. All will become clear when we go behind here. So part of what goes on in the back room is what I call the finishing. So we're going to go into the finishing area now and have a little look. So behind here, things of note uh, would be some of the packing materials uh, that I have to accumulate in order to be able to send work overseas, etc, etc. So that's part of this part of the operation. Plus, so we've got stretcher bars over here, which are very, very high quality timbers, uh, which form the backbone of the bars which the paintings get stretched around. I've got a work in progress down on the floor. This is a canvas that's waiting to go onto a frame, which is ready assembled on the table. That's quite handy, actually. It wasn't planned for the shooting of the video. It just happened to be that way. And this is the framing table, which is a bespoke piece of equipment, probably one of my favourite pieces that we've had built over the years. And this is where all the stretching of the canvases takes place. So everything is hand stretched around a hand built frame. And myself and Adrian, who's shooting the video, that's what we do on here. It's quite a delicate process, uh, needs a lot of care and attention. Uh, but it also needs the use of a very large hammer from time to time, which they just have as if you want sat there anyway. And other things of note in here, plenty of heaters because it can get very cold. There's a few experimental bits on the wall. We'll talk about that another day. Plenty of tools that we need in terms of going out on the road to see clients. Also with our experiments and our making skills, we just need tools of every kind. So that's pretty much what goes on out here. Sofa number three. Because let's be honest, like coffee machines, you can never have enough. And as we progress around the corner, past a uh, few bits in the work area there, then uh, this is kind of like an interim, more storagey kind of area, for want of a better word. So here we've got canvases which are rolled up. You can see a wonderful Christmas tree, with, as I call it, which Adrian built. And on there, we can roll canvases around tubes and then store them for another day. So there is work in progress, things I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with that staying there. Uh, some paintings out here which are either on one side or waiting to be photographed, ready to go on the website. So it's just really a question of organising the space as best as possible, really. So that's kind of the finishing area, which is the, the L-shape uh, workspace, which is out uh, in, in the back room. So we'll come back through now and uh, we're going to have a, as we walk backwards uh, through here where we just came, we're going to have a little wander now through into what I think is probably the best part and the coolest part of the building. Now, <laughs> the one thing you haven't seen yet is the space where actually the painting is done. So we're going to take you into that next. Um, it's the kind of thing that I would leave to the end of the tour because I like to think that actually what you're about to see now is, is something that is unique. You can't say it's fairly unique or completely unique because that doesn't make sense. This is just a, very, a unique space. To my knowledge, there isn't another one like it anywhere. Um, what you're going to see now, I affectionately call the pod. And the pod is a specific space that's been built uh, completely bespokely for the building. And it's a sealed containment unit where all the painting gets done. Now, I'm always going on about enamel paints and how they're wonderful and there's a huge proportion of what I talk about on the website is about the paint and about the material. But I can't really overplay it enough. The whole point of being able to do this, it comes down to using these materials and the enamel paints are amazing. However, it's at a price. Not only are they very expensive, but the actual enamel paint itself, using in the volumes I do, You've got to have a controlled environment to paint inside, to paint them with. Anyway, that has transpired into this, which is the paint pod, which is an 8 metre by 4 metre, uh, well, for want of a better word, tent. But it's a sealed tent. It's tethered to the building because what happens is when the extraction goes on, it tries to suck itself into a small ball. Now, if I'm stuck inside there and it does that, then I'm not going to last very long. But the whole point of this is that I can create a negative pressure environment that takes out all the bad vapours and sucks in clean air. In the meantime, Adrian and I, with our full face breathing masks, we can stay safe and everything's good. 
At some point I'll shoot a proper video that is all about the pod because in itself some of the facts and figures behind it are, are pretty crazy. And when you consider this is all done for one reason and that's just to open a tin of paint. We've gone to extraordinary lengths to try and make sure that the material is kept in a controlled environment but at the same time that we still are alive the following day. So it gets very noisy, it's very cold, uh, it's artificial light, not natural light. So it's quite an impressive environment to be in, but you get to do what you've just seen with it. And really there's just no other material I'd ever want to work in. It's, it's amazing stuff, but you have to be sensible and it requires a lot of kit to paint with it properly. So that's the pod. When you come here, we'll go in the pod I'll open up the flaps, there's two stages to it, we'll walk around, show you all the paints and materials, how it's done, all the stuff that really is, that you need to see it first hand, but I hope you get to see it, because it is, I think it's a really cool space, so. Let's not talk about why there's a great half an apple tree in here, we'll talk about that another day. <laughs> So that's almost all of the tour over, ladies and gentlemen. The last bit, really just the top of the stairs, just the admin and uh, where we do all the uh, bits and pieces that you know, doesn't involve physically doing anything. A couple of workstations, uh, lots of camera equipment uh, around today because obviously we're shooting videos, but there's a workstation for myself and notice boards so I can keep on track of everything. Uh, video editing software, station for Adrian to work at, Lots of stuff. And there's always plenty of uh, hot and cold drinks as well available. That's important. So the gallery really is, it's, we think it's a fantastic space and we'd love to see you here at some point. Stroud is a great part of the Cotswolds. I really do urge you to come and visit if you do get a chance. Stay for a couple of days. You know, book a hotel, come here, have a little wander around. You've got Stroud, Painswick, Sirencester. Some really fantastic places to be actually. So yeah, why, why not make a weekend of it or something and come and visit me at the same time. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is your tour of Suarez HQ. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for your time today. And please, 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 if you have any interest in this whatsoever, come and pay me a visit at some point and I'll be really, really glad to welcome you to the gallery. <laughs>